Welcome to uh, lesson three of lesson three of um, the unit on polynomial functions. Uh, this is on stretching, shrinking, and reflecting the graph x to the n. So let's take a look at what happens here. Uh, graph each pair of functions g of x, 1 fourth x to the fourth, and h of x, negative 1 fourth x to the fourth. Okay, so if we plug these in, 1 fourth times negative 2 to the fourth, well, negative 2 to the fourth, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, an even number of negatives, 2 negatives make a positive, 4 negatives make a positive, anytime it's an even number it's positive, 1 fourth of 16, that would equal 4. Okay. Now if we have a negative in front of that, then it's going to be a negative 4. Okay. So now 1, 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is 4. Oh, I'm sorry. 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. Times 1 fourth is 1 fourth. Because it's an even number of negatives, with that negative, then it becomes a positive. But if you multiply that by a negative out front, it becomes a negative. 0 raised to any power is 0 times a fourth is 0. One raised to the fourth is one times one fourth is one fourth. And again, the negative out front will cause it to be negative one fourth. And two raised to the fourth is sixteen times a fourth is four. With the negative out front, it's negative one fourth. Now we come over and graph that, and the g of x at negative two is four. At negative 1, it's 1 fourth. At 0, it's 0. At 1, it's 1 fourth. And at 2, it's 4. So you can kind of see if you look at the distance it is from um, the x axis to the new graph and the x axis to the parent graph our distance there is less. This one isn't quite as noticeable, just how I graphed it. And on the uh, negative 2, this graph is quite a bit up here. Okay, So it's quite a bit closer to the x-axis there. Now if we look at the h of x being the negative out in front, what it's done is it's brought it into the negatives, so instead of going up this way, it comes down this way. We say that it's reflected over the x-axis. Okay, With the negative out front, it's a reflection. And with the fraction, we've actually shrunk the distance to the x-axis, so we say it's a shrink or a compress. Now here what happens is instead of a fraction in the front, we put a whole number. Let's watch what happens here. Negative 2 cubed, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 times 2 is negative 16. Now if we take that negative 16, put a negative in front, that would be a positive 16. Negative 1 cubed would be negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Now if we take a negative in front of that, that would be a positive 2. 0 cubed is 0 times 2 is 0. So we both go through at 0. 1 to the third is 1 times 2 is 2. Put a negative in front of that. 
2 cubed is 16 times 2, or I mean 2 cubed is 8 times 2 is 16. And put a negative in front of that one. Okay, so now when we go over and graph, the g of x over here at negative 2 starts at negative 16, so it's way, way down here. The negative 1 is negative 2. Up there it's at 1. This graph it's going to be at 2. 0, 0, 2, and then way up there. So we've got this, that. That's for the g of x. Okay, so let me review these. It's the same pattern for both. For the even function where we have the U shape, when we have the fraction in the front, it shrinks it to the X axis. When we have a whole number in the front, it stretches it away from the X axis. This was at 1, now it goes clear up to 2, so it stretched it by a factor of 2. Any point from the parent function, you'd multiply it by 2 to see where it is on this new function. H of X, we're multiplying by a negative 2. So just like with the negative here, it reflected across the x-axis. It's going to bring this, bring it down this way. See how the, how the uh, positives went negative? So it comes down this way, stretched. This one goes up this way, stretched. So that's your h of x. Okay. How is the graph of f of x related to the graph of the parent function? Okay, when a is greater than 1. I would like you to look at, let's change these slightly. Um, rather than look at, at positives and then looking at negatives, let's just um, come up here and make a note. When it's a negative out front, it reflects over the x-axis. When it is a fraction, the absolute value of the a is between 1 and 0, so it's a fraction smaller than 1, absolute value, then it's going to be a compress or a shrink. It brings it down close to the x-axis. If it's an a value, absolute value of a, that is greater than 1, then it's going to stretch. Okay, so now on these questions, they're talking more about the negative, what happens with the reflection, but I want you aware of the stretch and compress as well. Go ahead and answer these. How is the n behavior of the graph of a x to the n related to the n behavior of the graph of the parent function x to the n? Remember, n behavior is as x goes towards infinity, what direction? Does your f of x go? In other words, what way does your y value go or your graph go? So um, every time that that uh, we change the the a value. Um, if the a value does not have a negative in front of it, then it will be the same as the parent function. Okay? If it has a negative value, then it's going to be the opposite of the parent function because it goes the opposite direction on the graph. Now they give us a specific example. They give us an a value of 3. The h value is h is there, so the h value is 2, and the k value is negative 4. So the horizontal is 2 units to the right, because it's a positive 2. I know it looks like a negative 2, but the negative comes from the formula. The k value is 4, the direction is down because it's negative. So we want to take this graph right here at the vertex and do the hk shift first. So we go 2 to the right, 
down four, put your vertex. Now, normally it goes over one, up one, and it crosses right there. We'll go over one, but we need to stretch by a factor of three, so we'll go up one, two, three. Up one, two, three. Now graph it. Okay? Use the transformation that you identified to help draw the graph. We did. Okay, describe how you think the graph of negative 0 0.5, parenthesis x plus 1, raised to the fifth, minus 1 is related to the parent graph of x to the fifth. Check your prediction by graphing it in a graph graphing calculator. Well, my prediction would be with a negative out front. It's going to be a reflection. A 1 half means that it shrinks by a factor of a half. The plus one is that it shifts to the left one. Minus one says that it goes down one. Okay, so let's try that on the graphing calculator and see if we're right. So we go on. Here's how you press it on. Go to the y equals. You need to clear what's in here. Now we're going to compare negative. Always use this for your negative on a on a number. 0 0.5 parenthesis. X is alpha X plus 1. Parenthesis closed. Raised to the 5. Minus 1. Now we just go, we're going to compare it to the parent function, which is just alpha x raised to the fifth. Okay? So we're going to compare these two. It'll graph our, uh, our parent function second. So let's go ahead and go to the graph. There's our new function. There's our parent function. So you can see our parent function. The vertex is here at 0, 0, and it is this way. So this is definitely a reflection. It definitely does come down one and over one because there's our vertex. So we guessed right if you were with me. OK. Now, the next problem, example 3 says that the graph of g of x is the graph of f of x equals x to the third after a series of transformations. Write the equation of g of x. So we see g of x here. And it says, complete the table to describe how the graph of the parent function must be translated to obtain the graph g of x. Hint, consider the symmetry point. 0, 0 on the graph of f of x. So here's 0, 0. And it's best to consider that. Where would that point be on the other graph? It's right here. That'll help us to know our horizontal and vertical shift. So horizontally, we went 1, 2 to the left. So we went 2 units left. Vertically, we went 1, 2, 3 units up. So we know that our h is a negative 2, and our k is a plus 3. So now it says determine the value of a for this equation. The image of the point 0, 0 is at negative 2, 3. We established that by finding our way over to here. The image of the point 1, 1, see this 1, 1, is at... Image of the point one one is at well if we brought this back down to here then it would be at bring this back over it would be at 
negative one, one. In other words, they've, they've picked this transformed one up and brought it back this way. Okay? The vertical distance between zero, zero, and one, one is one unit. The vertical distance between the images of zero, zero, and one, one is two units. Oh, I see what they're saying. Take a look here at our point. The other point is right here, and it stretches up from there to there. See how this one has these three diagonals? This one has its diagonals, but it actually be right there. So it's got a stretch of two in there. I don't understand how their blanks go, but um, you can definitely see the stretch. Instead of coming up one over one, it's going uh, up two and over one, or down two and over one. Okay, so this means that the A value is two. You can look right inside of your vertex there to see that. The graph of the parent function is reflected across the x-axis. In other words, this part is down, this part is up. So A, uh, they're just wanting to say it's a negative number, is less than zero. So the value of a is negative 2. Now we just plug in our h, k, and a values. So it would be negative 2 x minus a negative 2 for the h, so it's a plus 2 cubed plus 3. Okay. The graph of g of x contains negative 3, 5, Check that your equation from part C is correct by showing that negative 3, 5 satisfies the equation. So you need to plug 5 in for your y value, and negative 3 in for your x value, and show that it works. Go ahead and work this out. Work what's inside parentheses first, then you'll cube it, multiply it by negative 2, and then add 3, and it should equal 5. On the next one, suppose the graph g of x is translated four units. Okay, here's g of x. They want to translate it four units to the right. Right would be minus four. And five units down, that would be minus five. Give the graph of h of x equals. All we need to do is pull down these numbers. Negative two, x. Two minus four would be negative two cubed. Positive 3 minus 5 is minus 2. You've just translated that many units from that g of x. Okay. Tomorrow in class, we will go over practice together and any questions that you have from this. Thank you very much.